Good morning, Bhante Ji. Happy birthday, Bhante. Good morning, Bhante. Good morning. Good morning, Bhante. Uh, today, I like to uh, speak on, uh, explain two words. They, um, uh, these two words uh, are used very often, especially in uh, Pali language, and uh, occasionally you hear them in English as well. Uh, these two words are the world and Tathagata. Loka and Tathagata. Pali word is Loka and Tathagata. <laughs> so Buddha explained uh, what the world is and what Tathagata is. The <coughs> Let me adjust this, okay. World is, there is a discourse in uh, uh, Anguttara Nikaya called Rohitasa Sutta. Rohitasa Sutta. One day, when the Buddha was in uh, living in uh, Jetavana Monastery, uh, in the middle of the night, a certain deity appeared. Hmm. Okay. Uh, in the middle of the night, and uh, asked the Buddha a question. He asked the Buddha, uh, "Is it possible, Bhante, by traveling, to know, see, or reach?" the end of the world where one is not born, does not grow old and die, does not pass away and get reborn. Uh, so this is the question. By traveling, can one, uh, does one, uh, where one will know the end of the world by traveling? Uh, one can know the end of the world where there is no, uh, there's not born, does not grow old, die, does not pass away and get reborn. And Buddha straight away said, I say, friend, that by traveling, one cannot know, see, or reach that end of the world where one is not born, does not grow old and die, does not pass away and get reborn. Now, this is very important uh, question and answer. And these days, uh, we see astronomers try to reach various planet stars using most sophisticated, modern 
technology. They try to reach, they even try to buy land in various places like uh, the moon and, uh, and so forth. Uh, so people think uh, our knowledge is so great, we are so advanced, so we can conquer the world, go to the end of the world. But Buddha said, by, by traveling uh, by rockets and so on, you cannot reach the world, which is a which is interesting world. The world, uh, the world where one is not born, they want to extend their life. There is a tendency that people think since science is so advanced, they can extend their life and does not grow old and die and does not pass away and get reborn. There's a people, that is the belief that some people hold on to these days. And the Buddha said, by traveling, you cannot do that. Then this deity <laughs> said to the Buddha, it is astounding and amazing, Bhante, how well this was stated by the Blessed One. And he said, I say, friend, the Buddha said, and blessed, the, the deity praised the Buddha. How well Buddha expressed this the saying, that I say, friend, that by traveling one cannot see, go, cannot know, see or reach that end of the world where one is not born, does not grow old and die, does not pass away and get reborn. And he was so pleased. And he said to the Buddha, Venerable Sir, in the past, Bhante, I was a seer, sage, named Rohitasa, son of Boja, one possessing psychic potency, able to travel through the sky. He has such a psychic power that he could travel through the sky. My speed was like that of a light arrow, easily shot by a firm board archer, one trained skill and experienced across the shadow of a palmyra tree. So the arrow is, he can shoot the arrow so fast because it is very light arrow. It goes through the air. No air will obstruct this arrow because it is so fast and light that it can pass the shadow of a palmyra tree very quickly. So, and also my, my stride. Uh, my stride was said that it could reach from the eastern ocean to the western ocean. His one foot is in the eastern ocean, other foot is on the western ocean. Such a big stride. Then the speed is such, the stride is so big or wide, then, while I possess such speed and such a stride, I was, I wish, uh, that I, a wish arose in me, the wish arose in me. I will reach the end of the world by traveling. Why not? With such a speed, such a stride, the thought arose in him. 
having a lifespan of 100 years. Mother. Not only that, his lifespan is 100 years. He can live 100 years. His stride is so low, big. His speed is so high. No rocket can go the, at that speed. So he was traveling. Living for 100 years. I travel for 100 years without pausing, without pausing, without stopping, except to eat, drink, chew, taste, to defecate and urinate, and to dispel fatigue with sleep. Yet, okay, now he was traveling, he said, and yet <laughs> I died along the way without having reached the end of the world. So he died. He could not reach the end of the world. So it is, he said, it is astounding and amazing, Bhante, how well this was stated by the Blessed One. I say, Prat, that by traveling, one cannot know, see, or reach that end of the world where one is not born, does not grow old and die, does not pass away and get reborn. What kind of world where there is no birth, death, and rebirth? That kind of world. Then, <clears throat> Buddha confirmed, Buddha said, Buddha affirmed, but he said, yes, I said that. I said, friend, that by traveling one cannot know see or reach that end of the world where one is not born, does not grow old and die, does not pass away and get reborn, and yet, this is the thing he emphasized, and yet I say that without having reached the end of the world, there is no making an end of suffering. I say you cannot go to the end of the world by traveling, and but I say without having reached the end of the world, there is no making an end of suffering. So this uh, is a very uh, contradictory statement. It is in, so Buddha said, by traveling, you cannot reach the end of the world, but without going to the end of the world, you cannot end up suffering. This is like a puzzle. So, that is, this is the, the way the Buddha explained this puzzle. That is, he explained what this world is. What is this world? Uh, and he said, it is in this, in this fathom long body, endowed with perception and mind, that I proclaim the world, the origin of the world, the cessation of the world, and the way leading to the cessation of the world. What is this world? <laughs> this this world, Buddha said, I proclaim this world. The, what is this world? The world is one fathom body of one fathom body with perceptions and mind. Savinyanake Kai. I proclaim the world in the uh, Mahasati Patana Sutta and so forth, he learned Atikayo Jopana Sati Pachi Patitao, the Yavad Yanamatai, Anisito Jirti, Nacha Kinchi Loke Upadiati, Nacha Kinchi Loke Upadiati. You, 
practice mindfulness and see rising and falling, rising and falling. But don't cling to the world. The word loka is there. Don't, the meditator does not cling to the world. What is this world? He does not cling or he should not cling. The world that we see with the eyes and uh, hear sound through the ear, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind outside. And when we, whenever people say, world is full of problems, world is full of crimes, world is full of chaos, world is such and such and such and such. And in that respect, they don't refer to the world that the Buddha mentioned. <laughs> they always look the world outside. Buddha said, no. This is the world. If there are 8 billion people in the world, there are 8 billion worlds. So each world <laughs> must learn to know the world. Each world must know the origin of the, that world. The each world should know the cessation of the world. Each world should know the way to the end of cessation of this world. Okay. Now, therefore, end of the world cannot, can never be reached by means of traveling. Traveling across the world, that's the external world. Yet without reaching the world's end, there is no release from suffering. Okay, now, uh, then who is the one who made this declaration? That is called Tathagata. It is this Tathagata who made that statement. Who is this Tathagata? This Tathagata, Buddha said, because Tathagata has fully awakened to the world. Tathagata is detached from the world. Tathagata was, is fully awakened to the world, but this Tathagata is detached, not attached to the world. And Tathagata is detached from the world. And Tathagata is fully awakened to the origin of the world. Tathagata has abandoned the origin of the world. So, Tathagata was awakened to the world. Tathagata was not, Tathagata is detached from the world. And Tathagata uh, has fully awakened to the origin of the world. And Tathagata has abandoned the origin of the world. Tathagata is fully awakened to the cessation of the world. Tathagata has treated the cessation of the world. Tathagata fully awakened to the way leading to the cessation of the world, leading to the cessation of the world. And Tathagata has uh, uh, developed, has developed the, 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 the way leading to the cessation of the world. What does this mean? He referred to the four noble truths. Where is Four Noble Truth? Four Noble Truth is suffering, cause of suffering, end of suffering, path leading to the end of suffering. Where is the suffering? Suffering is in that world. What is that world? World with 
this body with vijnana, perception and consciousness. That is the world. He fully awakened to it and then he, he, uh, he was not attached to it. He is detached from it and uh, he knew, he understood the origin of this world and he abandoned the origin that is the cause of suffering and he realized the end of, su of the world that is end of suffering and he knew reached realized the end of suffering the way leading to end of suffering and he practiced developed the way to the end of suffering that is for noble truth he realized and therefore he is called tathagata tathagata and then not that there is uh, uh, so buddha explained this in detail this is also very wonderful we must remember that because in this world with this devas Mar Brahma among this population with its ascetics and Brahmins, its devas and humans, whatever is seen, that is very important. Number one, this Tathagata, explain in detail. Number one, whatever divine, human, Brahmins, and so forth and so on has seen. Heard with the ear and sensed with the nose, tongue, body, and cognized with the mind and reached at their ends and sought after, examined by the mind, all that the Tathagata has fully awakened to. Therefore, he is called Tathagata. Whatever seen, whatever all living beings, all living beings, this uh, 8 billion people or even trillion people, human, divine, so, so forth, have seen, heard, uh, smelled, uh, touched, tasted, and examined with the mind and all this. All this Buddha, Tathagata, knew perfectly well. Tathagata has fully awakened to that, fully awakened, not half awakened, fully awakened. Therefore, he is called Tathagata. It is this Tathagata that explained to Rohitas what this world is, how to end the world, go to the end of the world. Then the Satagata is, this is very important. Number two, whatever the Tathagata speaks, utters, or expounded in the interval between the night when he awakens to the unsurpassed perfect enlightenment and the night when he attains final Nibbana. Okay. From the moment he attained enlightenment, and in other words, from the moment he attained enlightenment till he passed away, whatever he said, whatever he uttered, whatever he expounded and declared and said, this is such and such, all that is just so and not otherwise. Whatever the Buddha said from the moment he attained enlightenment until he passed away, everything he said is just so. There's no changes. For instance, I give you a Buddha. Here we didn't have an example, but I tell you an example. Very often I mention this example. Impermanence. Impermanence. 
whether the Buddhas come into existence or not, things are impermanent. So called the world and the universe and the stars and suns and moons and whatever. Whatever object is in this universe is impermanent. They are changing, 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 changing all the time. That is one example that Buddha said uh, would not change. Third is because. Buddha himself said, because as the Tathagata speaks, so he does. As he does, so he speaks. His thoughts, uh, his speech and action are all uh, what you concordant, no discordance. Agree. What he said and what he did agree. Not like other people, other individuals. They say one thing and do something else. While saying, uh, practicing metta, I practice metta, practice metta, they ask, uh, uh, you practice metta, practice. somebody said, I don't understand what your metta means. You fool, you don't understand? Where is his metta? <laughs> While saying, practicing, Metta, asking people to practice metta, he get angry. Later on, out or before, while he's saying that, don't get angry, he gets angry. That's how unenlightened people's behavior is. And the next is the fourth meaning or definition of Tathagata. Uh, because in this world with its devas, maras, brahmas, among this population with its uh, ascetics and brahmin, its devas and humans, the Tathagata is the vanquisher, the unvanquished. Vanquisher, the unvanquished. And uh, the and the uh, wielder of mastery. Therefore, Tathagata, Tathagata, Tathagata is the vanquisher, the unvanquished. Un-universal, uh, universal seer. Universal seer. The world of mastery. Therefore, he is called Tathagata. So, uh, in it's very clear in Pali words, but when he translated uh, the meaning, uh, it may, may, there is a meaning, good meaning, uh, translated very well, but when you say in Pali, it is clearer. Uh, in Pali, is, is it uh, loka vidu? What is it? What we say, loka vidu? Yeah, okay. loka, no, loka vidu, loka vidu, and tathagata is the same. Loka vidu is the nova of the world, all these worlds. That's what he, he explained earlier. Now he said tathagata. Lokavidu is more popular, close to the meaning of the meaning that we explained earlier, Lokavidu. Okay. And you. having directly known all the world, all the world just as it is, he is detached from all the world, disengaged from all the world. He is vanquisher of all the world. The wise, wise one who has uh, united uh, the ununited, dis uh, distracted, he is supreme peace, 
Nibbana inaccessible to fear. Nibbana is uh, the one the Buddha realized and those who have fear uh, may not uh, reach Nibbana. Uh, he is the Buddha. His taints destroyed, unrebelled, all doubts cut off, having faced the destruction of all karmas. I mentioned the Buddha is the one who committed karma that destroys karma. <clears throat> what is the karma that destroys karma? The karma that destroys karma is called Noble Eightfold Path. He followed, when you follow Noble Eightfold Path, Noble Eightfold Path is also a karma, but that is not uh, a karma that will, uh, will cause rebirth. According to karma, we take rebirth. But this karma, follow, follow, this karma means the karma, the Noble Eightfold Path. When we follow the Noble Eightfold Path, we destroy karma. Therefore, Noble Eightfold Path is called Kamma Khe Kamma. Kamma that destroys karma. Karma must come to an end. Existence in samsara must come to an end. We must go to the end of the world. As Buddha mentioned in Rohita Sutta, we must go to the end of the world. To go to the end of the world, we have to follow the Noble Eightfold Path. And therefore, Noble Eightfold Path is called Kamma Destroying Kamma. Kamma Destroying Kamma. Whenever you ask somebody, otherwise there is no end of the world. We do good, hold something now, then we get better results. Hold some results, then we do more wholesome uh, things. When you are happy, peaceful, strong, uh, prosperous, and so forth, you think, I have done wholesome come in the past, therefore I must do more wholesome come in this life. And you commit more wholesome come, then you will be reborn. Again, you do wholesome come, then again, you will be reborn. Again, you do wholesome, again. So there's no end to that. Therefore, ending. So that is the way to follow the Noble Eightfold Path. Therefore, Noble Eightfold Path is called Kamma Destroying Kamma. Having reached the destruction of all Kammas, uh, he liberated in the extinction of acquisitions. He is the Blessed One, the Buddha, he is land unsurpassed in this world with its devas. He set in motion the wheel of Brahma. He is Dhamma, Brahma Chakra. The Noble Eightfold Path is called the, uh, the Dhamma Chakra. The Four Noble Truths, Noble Eightfold, Dhamma Chakra. And also called Brahma Chakra, highest wheel. And he is tamed, he is a tamer or the tamable. Satta, Satta, Deva Manusana. Satta, Deva Manusana. Tame the tamable. And he was peaceful and bring peace to the world, to this the world that Buddha explained to Rohitasa. So, therefore, these are the two words I want to explain today. One word is the world, next word, the other word is Tathagata. Who the Tathagata is, what the world is. Also, friends, I think this may be enough uh, if we were to go in, into detail it will take a much longer time since we need some time to practice meditation. 
I think I, I must end this session and go for meditation. Okay. Okay. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long or large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of loving friendliness above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or in the awake. One should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this thought of metta, let us practice meditation. And uh, I mentioned last week, <coughs> even before, you sit up in a comfortable posture and breathe deeply and breathe out deeply until all the air in your lungs is gone. So next time when you breathe in, you will have lung full of oxygen. And keep repeating this again. Deep inhaling and deep exhaling. When you do that, it gives you more time to see impermanence of your feelings, perceptions, thought, and consciousness. The breath is changing, impermanent, the feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness all change. At the same time, very quickly, because of the speed of this change, we think there is no change. It is because of the speed. When we pay attention and breathe deeply, you may be able to see the changes impermanence. That which is impermanence is unsatisfactory. That which is impermanent, unsatisfactory is without self. That which is without self is neither I, no mine, no myself. This way we can get rid of our craving, conceit, and wrong views. So, put it in, uh, in Pali so that 
somebody might enjoy it, learning the Pali word. Everything, uh, anicca, anicca, aggregate and so forth, all anicca, yadinicca and tandukang, whatever is impermanent that is unsatisfactory. Yadinicca and tandukang, yandukang tadanattang. Whatever is suffering uh, does not help self. Yadanattang, tang ne tang mama, ne so hamasin, me so atta, ne tang mama means that is not mine. When you say that mine, that is tanna, ne tang mama, when you say that is not mine, you get rid of your tanna. Ne so hamasmi, this is not I. That is, I means, I, I, I means conceit, expressing conceit, pride, and we get rid of that. Tanna mana ditti, ditti means wrong view. So, ne tang mama ne so amasinna me so atta. This is not self. You get rid of that wrong view. When you get rid of that, your tanna mana ditti is gone. Temporarily, at least, and then you will be very peaceful, relaxed, calm. At least you will understand this uh, series of events uh, arising, depending on each other, and passing away. With this, I stop talking, and it continue meditating until I ring the bell. If you like to meditate longer, even though I ring the bell, you continue your practice.
By means of this meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings have in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Friends, with this uh, metta sharing, let us end this uh, session. And I always uh, share our metta with all living beings. May we wish that all those who are suffering in hospitals taken care of by very compassionate doctors, nurses, and hospital staff. May they recover very soon and return to normal life, have time to practice meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those doctors, nurses, and hospital staff who are so compassionately taking care of these people, their patients, risking their own life, Sacrifice in their comfort, may find time to practice meditation and find peace and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones may be free from grief and understand the nature of life, practice Dhamma, and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in various troubled spots, politically and otherwise, in war zones, poverty-stricken, discrimination, and so forth and so on, may they find peace somehow and find time to practice them meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who are, whose categories I have not mentioned, all beings in all ten directions, be well, happy, and peaceful, and liberate from samsaric suffering. With this metta sharing, let us end today's session. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Come up with your questions and we will spend another hour with you tomorrow morning. And those who join us in our Sunday class, may remember we have a class at uh, 3 o'clock on Sunday, tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. 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 Thank you, Bhante.